it's wonderful to have you with us in our sunday school teaching today for the 27th of september 2020 our topic is the power of the gospel the power of the gospel let's pray father we bring ourselves before you today O oh god not like yesterday not like the week before but we come afresh oh god and we come anew we pray jehovah god for the anointing to teach your word we pray jehovah god that our ears and our hearts will be circumcised lord that will be let in even into the secrets of the most high lord that the power of this gospel will be manifest in each one of us that is listening in the name of jesus thank you father we pray in jesus name amen let's take our reading from second corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 to 9 and then 16 to 18 therefore since we have this ministry as we have received mercy we do not lose hearts but we have renounced the hidden things of shame not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of god deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of god but even if our gospel is veiled it is veiled to those who are perishing whose minds the god of this age has blinded who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of christ who is in the image of god should shine on them for we do not preach ourselves but christ jesus the lord and ourselves your bond servants for jesus sake for it is for it is the god who commended light to shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory in the face of jesus christ but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of god and not of us we are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken struck down but not destroyed praise the lord now let me start from the other end to say that the bible records second corinthians 4 4 that satan is the god small letter of this world the consequence of that is that he has succeeded in blinding the eyes of everybody to start with and then everybody that has not received jesus as lord and savior therefore if you are not born again if you have not given your heart to jesus if you are not a christian so to say your eyes are blinded by satan that's why you cannot see the glory of god as displayed by the gospel that is why you do not know you are heading for hellfire that is why you do not know that you are missing heaven but as we proceed in this message it will dawn on you that that does not have to be satan does not have to be your god because it's a bigger god and he is here and now to deliver you to save you to assign your name to a mansion in heaven haven't said that therefore as a child of god are you a pastor are you a minister paul says we have denounced every crafty thing when we preach we preach the plain gospel because it is then that the power of god goes with it if you add your own ideas you want to make it sweet and acceptable to people you are not preaching christ you're preaching yourself if you're sharing a false testimony i even understand that some people hire people to come and share testimony where i was dead and then the man of god just waved his hand and i resurrected and is a lie if you are doing that you are recruiting people to yourself you are not recruiting people to jesus and you are not representing him you are using crafty methods and you are not saved and the people you are bringing to yourself are not either 
Therefore, Paul says, because we know this, we use plainness of speech. Nothing complicated. Say it as it is, because it is not your gospel, and it is not my gospel. It is the word of God. Wozi ana atuilu. Wozi atuilu. Just say it as it is, and let God do his own part. Praise the Lord. Now, we are talking about the power of the gospel. What is the gospel? They say it's good news. Why is it good news? It is good news, number one, because it saves people. The Bible says that anybody who is not a child of God is a foreigner to God. He's a foreigner to heaven. He's an enemy to God. He is living in darkness and eventually will end up on the wrong side of eternity. But it says when we hear the word of God and we accept it, he says we become number one sons and daughters of God. Can you imagine that the God of heaven and earth becomes your father? What could be better than that? Number two, instead of remaining in darkness and being blinded by Satan, you have been translated into the glorious light of his gospel. You can see things the way they are. They say Jesus is coming again. You understand it because your light your heart has been enlightened and now you can see the things of god as they are when they say well you can be healed just by prayer you don't say well you believe it even though it hasn't happened to you or it hasn't happened through you but you know it is true they say god has prepared a mansion for you you know because jesus who said i'm going to prepare a place for you never lied while he was on earth why would he lie about that one so good news because people repent and they become children of god salvation is very very important it is good news because when you have therefore received salvation god himself the spirit of god the, the jesus himself the godhead they come to live inside of you they come to live with you my brother my sister what can be more glorious than that that the god of heaven when you are lying down and sleeping he's smiling at you angels around you when you're walking on the road the spirit of god is inside you he says greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world you are not powerless you are not helpless you can now begin to see a future you can now begin to have boldness you can now begin to have good self-esteem you can now value yourself you can now have the capacity to love people and have joy and peace because the spirit of god lives inside you number three it is called the gospel because god can now use you can send you become a servant of god you become a minister of god you represent god wow what else you speak in the name of god you become an ambassador those are the three reasons that i know there is more that the gospel is good news it's not just good news because people just uh, preach and believe and all that no there's a reason why i know it's good news because it's happened to me it's happened to millions of people around the world millions of people more than millions at least a billion more than one billion people it's happened to them and they are joyous in the holy ghost praise the lord now with all this that we have talked about the bible says we are carrying this glory that is the spirit of god but you know what the bible says we carry it on an earthen vessel earthen vessel you know what it is our moms used to use that to store drinking water that is what it is and make a mistake just let it touch the corner of a stone and it's broken to pieces god did not make us our bodies vessels of gold there's gold inside of us and it begins to come out but the 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 vessel that carries it the bible says is earthen vessel why so that the glory hallelujah so that the glory will belong to god 
and not to the career. I used to, I watched a movie, Julius Caesar movie in those days. And one thing that attracted my attention, there was a herald who will always say, as Caesar appeared in all his glory, and everybody is cheering, and that person will walk beside him and say, Caesar, remember you are mortal. Remember you are mortal. Remember with all this glory. Remember you are still a human being. So watch out. You can still die. You know, it used to intrigue me and I, I think that is really, really true. That is true. And that is what the Bible is talking about here. We have this very, very glorious, most important something that God calls the glory. The Spirit of God inside us. But God has chosen to put it in a fragile vessel. So that, so if you see a man of God, he's healing people, he's doing that. Hey, don't direct your attention to him. Direct your attention to the person that is energizing him. Because if the person just suddenly leaves, leaves the body, that's the end of him. Even if he has not died, but the glory has departed. He can't do anything. Can you imagine Samson? Samson had the spirit of God. Samson had the anointing of God. And he missed it. He thought, oh yeah, now I am big. Now I am. And he began to live carelessly. Where they say don't go, that is where Samson will go. After all, I am Samson now. And then he was with the harlots. And the Philistines surrounded the city. And there's a big gate. And there are, there, there are bars. He was secure. And they say, we got him today. Let him come out in the morning. Samson didn't even mind. He stayed in the laps of a harlot. Until midnight. And he said, I'm Samson now. Let's go and see. While those people were there, they knew Samson can never pass through this gate. So they must have watched every other place. Samson came out middle of the night. I don't know whether you have seen the gates, the doors and the bars and the and the gates of those cities. It wasn't something. Samson pulled it up from the foundation, pulled it up, put it on his shoulder. And it didn't stop there. He started moving with it. And he didn't just move with it. He carried it up to the mountain. That was Samson. Boy, did he have the glory? Yes, he did. But the same Samson, because of carelessness, because he, he thought he had arrived, he ended up in disgrace. Are you a man of God? Always remember that this earthen vessel is breakable. Remember that it is not of you. Remember that is not yours. Remember that the owner can take it. And that will be the end of you. You can go back. Praise the Lord. Therefore, he says where have, we, where we have read, he said, because of this earthen vessel, we can be hard pressed. Things become so difficult. It is because you are earthen. Things can become hard. Things can become difficult. And you ask yourself, where is my God? He is there. But he said, we are hard pressed, but not crushed. The glory inside will not let the earthen vessel to be crushed. Why? Because you are still operating in the will of God. Don't worry about challenges and problems. Number two, he says we can be perplexed. There are times when we do not understand what is going on. I don't know whether it happened to you. If it hasn't happened to you, well, praise God, you're a super Christian. It's happened to me a few times that I, I don't understand. But because of the glory of God, because of the glory, I don't despair. I keep going. Once God said to me, you have a little strength, but you have not denied my name. Wow. It is because of the glory that... Even though we are perplexed sometimes, we don't understand. And it happened to Jesus. Can you imagine? 
It happened to Jesus on the cross. Jesus said, Father, why have you forsaken me? He was perplexed. He was perplexed. When the sin of the whole world, your sin, my sin, the sin of 7 billion, um, billion people were placed on him. And God the Father who cannot look at sin looked away. He said, is that not my father looking away and walking away? What is this? I, I agreed to die. That's fine. But I didn't know you were going to turn your back on me. Jesus was perplexed. But he did not despair. We are persecuted. But we are not forsaken. We might be persecuted as we go along and do our God-given business. But God never forsakes us. Praise the Lord. Paul was even stoned to the point where they thought he was dead and they left him. And the glory of God said, hey, hey, get up from there. Let's go and do the job. And he got up. Praise the Lord. He says, we are struck down, but not destroyed. There are times when the enemy thinks, oh, I finished him. He is in hospital. He can't get up. He is dying. But the Bible says we are struck down sometimes, but we are not destroyed. He says the outward body might be perishing. Sickness can come. Poverty can come. Trials can come. People can so lie against you, you won't even recognize yourself. The outward body is perishing. But the inward being is renewed every day as we fellowship with God. Hey, a Christian testified he was in hospital. He was unwell. He was in hospital. And as he was there in hospital, God told him, he said, look at the person beside you in the same on the next bed. He said, that person is a captain in the army. He said, really? Yes. He said, tell him. That I have promoted him to a major. <laughs> I mean, you are in hospital now. Come on, God. Come on. You haven't even healed me. I don't even know whether I'm going to live or die. And you are sending me. And when I said, hey, are you a soldier? I said, yes. Are you a captain? He said, yes. He said, God said he's promoted you to a major. And I mean, somebody will look at him and said, you, you're prophesying. Okay, why haven't you prophesied to yourself? Then... And some people who don't understand say, hey, you are going to somebody, so so and so's church to pray. But I'm a doctor, he came to my clinic yesterday. How come he hasn't healed himself and you're going to be healed? Listen, it doesn't work like that. He is carrying an eating vessel. And therefore, he can be subject now and again to those kind of things that you are also subject to. It doesn't make him less of a man of God. It doesn't make him less anointed. I'm not saying every man of God will have to be sick. That is a question that not every not everybody can answer readily. A lot of men of God, a lot of women of God live carelessly. By that I mean they can walk and walk and walk and they don't rest. And of course they, when the body needs rest, it will collapse. And by force, you take leave and go and spend that you live in a hospital bed. That's not just the only reason. But it can come to anybody because we are carrying the glory in an earthen vessel. So that we will remember that the glory doesn't come from us. The glory is not our own. The glory belongs to God. Praise the Lord. Now, therefore... What is our hope? We are looking at the power of the gospel. And we have said the gospel saves us, changes us. And then God uses us to reach out to other people. And we said that this glory is carried in a fragile earthen vessel. Yet, as a man of God, our hope is that a day will come. A day will come when we will be in a place where there is no more shame, no more sickness, no more failure. But before then, look at the scripture. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 verse 2, it says, Beloved, 
you are now a child of God. The world doesn't understand who you are. You may not even understand it fully. But it says, when we shall see him, we shall be like him. Wow. It says, don't worry. Whether you have a broken leg or not, doesn't matter. When we we'll see him, we'll be like him. All of a sudden, you'll be, you'll be changed. And you see yourself glorious just as Jesus. And sometimes you say, excuse me, is that my brother Koro shining like that? And I can hardly tell the difference between him and Jesus. Hey, is that him? And then you look at yourself. Bible says we shall see him, we will be like him. But the one that blows my mind more, the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. My God, as Jesus is, so am, who am I? As he is, so are we. Not what we are going to be, but as we are now, as he is, so are we. And the Bible says we are seated in heavenly places in Christ, far above principalities and powers. Far above the wicked spirits that people fear. Far above and we can exercise authority over them. Hey! Demons want to make you run. No, my brother. No, now. No. The Bible says where we have read. In 2 Corinthians 4, 18, it says, The things we see are temporary. But there is something, there are things we don't see which are permanent. They don't decay. You be in a good house and you live in a good house, one day it will decay. You have a good car, park that car for a few years, it will decay and become dust. You see a beautiful human being, full of glory. The Bible says that that person will die. And by the time, if you are, they're not buried quickly, you won't be able to stay there. Why? Because the things that we see are temporal. The things that are permanent are the things that have been stored for us in heaven. They don't decay. My brother, my sister, there is power in the gospel. And that power can save. That power can deliver. That power can heal. That power can do all sorts of things and we just need to cooperate with God receive the gospel as it is the power and the glory of God the light of God in our lives and live by it and live in the obedience of God but let us remember that the Bible says it doesn't matter how great you are we are carrying this glory in an earthen vessel. Therefore, we need to always depend on God. Somebody I know, when we were young, I'm still young, when we were young, he was doing very well in the gospel. And before you knew it, miracles started happening. Miracles started happening. And I saw him about 10, 10 years later. And I, 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 I couldn't recognize him. I couldn't recognize him. When we were together, we used to eat together and stay together. As young as we were, he already had gray hair. Because of suffering, he was trying to make it in the gospel. He was a graduate. People said, go and get a job. He said, no. God has called me. Okay, go to Bible school. No, I won't go. God says, and he persisted until the power of God began to show forth in his life and when i saw him he packed a mercedes benz and he greeted me and he looked familiar but it's not him is it him it's not him and they say it's me wow but as we were talking god gave me a final word for him god said i said to him look whatever you did to attract the presence of god in your life those days go back to doing them don't think because you are now big, you will leave the primary things that you stay on the floor and study 
and have a night vigil on your own and pray and God came I said you need to go back to it you have money now you have a car don't desert the first principles what actually attracted the attention of God and I hope he heard it my brother there is power in the gospel and we are carrying that power in our fragile body so that the excellency of that power will be of God and not of us and there is glory that is even greater the Bible says a heavier weight of glory that is awaiting for us that we are marching to praise the Lord and because of it we do not faint don't use trick to get money from people it doesn't pay the money will perish but the glory will remain and God because he is true says he's already prepared a place for us have you repented and given your heart to Jesus this message is for you persist continue in righteousness and God will reward you are you not born again are you not a Christian you go to church but you know you have not made peace with God through Christ say this prayer after me dear Lord Jesus I come to you now forgive all my sin write my name in the book of life cancel it from the book of death cleanse me by the blood of your son Jesus Christ give me your Holy Ghost to lead me until you meet me face to face be my Lord and Savior thank you for answering me for I have prayed in Jesus name Amen thank you father for helping us today and thank you for my brothers my sisters boys and girls who have listened i pray jehovah god that the power of the gospel will continue to benefit us until we meet you face to face tune in again next week for another session of our sunday school teaching if you can go to youtube type in joseph and your hand search and you have this message and others facebook the same thing so that we can continue following and growing in the grace of god god bless you in jesus name amen